Welcome back to Brochures Adventures and today I want to talk a little bit about time lapses and how I shoot them for my travel videos. There are three main ways that I create my time lapses. I'm going to take you through all three of them and then I'm going to tell you which one I like the most. The first way is very simple. You just take some video footage, probably five to ten minutes I would say, that's what I normally do, and then you speed it up in your editing program after the fact. All you have to do is go to your lock screen, slide down, it'll bring you into your photo application, um, then you just go to video and start recording. If you're using a Sony RX100 or similar camera, all you have to do is turn the camera on, turn the mode dial to the video mode, and push the movie button. So what you would do is you would go into Adobe Premiere if you're a Premiere user like me, and then you would either um, right click on the clip after you've drug it into your sequence and click speed, and there it'll actually let you adjust um, the percentage of how fast you want it to go or uh, you can take it down by how many seconds you want the end product to be. Or what is a little bit easier is I just click the rate stretch tool and I stretch it to uh, how, how short I want it to be. So if I need it to fill 10 seconds, I take it back to 10 seconds and that speeds up the entire clip to fill that 10 second gap. This can be done with pretty much any camera. Mostly I use either my phone or the RX100 Mark IV that I've got here because they're a little smaller and they're easier to set in different locations on the ground or in corners and stuff like that to get unique shots. If I want a wide angle, I'll use either the GoPro that I have or I'll use the camera I'm using right now with the uh, 10 to 22 millimeter lens on it, which is a Canon 80D. Shooting and speeding up video is actually probably the best option if you're short on time or if you want to uh, do transition techniques that involve real time to super speed, because if you do time lapses in any other mode that I show you, it's just gonna be the time lapse. You can speed up the time lapse, but you can't slow anything down to real time. There are quite a few drawbacks to just shooting and editing the speed of the video because it's in 1080p, but uh, that doesn't give you a lot of editing in post-production. You can't edit each individual photo because it only gives you um, the output file, which is just a MP4 or MOV file. So in the end, that's gonna mean overall less quality. And the last main drawback is that by taking five or 10 minutes of video at a time, it's actually gonna be a substantially larger file than just taking um, the time-lapse in video form right out of the camera. And that's actually what I wanna talk about next is time-lapse applications on your phone, or in this case, on cameras as well, because a lot of cameras have the capability for time-lapse now. And if you're using your iPhone, this just means that you can go into the um, camera app, you can flip down to time lapse, and it'll give you an option to make a recording. And as long as you record, it records like a video would, but it only takes a snapshot every half a second, I believe, is what it is on iPhones. Um, it may be different on some other camera phones, but uh, half a second isn't actually that much time between shots, so there's going to be a, a lot of difference between video shot and the time lapse shot. It's still going to be in 1080p. Again, using the time lapse application on your phone is a great way to save time. If you're going to use it on a camera like I have here, the Sony RX100 Mark IV or the Canon 80D, it's going to be a little bit more complicated. You can do some more setup in the camera to get more of a, a polished look to the time lapse. You just turn the camera on, turn the dial to manual, shutter priority, aperture priority, or program, and then you have to click menu, application list. Once you've found your application list, if you don't have it installed, you have to install time lapse by going to the Play Memories app store and connecting to Wi-Fi. Mine's already installed on the camera, so I'm gonna go into time lapse. This will bring up some settings and you can choose from different presets, sunset, sunrise, miniature, standard. I usually go with the custom because you can choose exactly what you want it to do. And then if you would like to change the settings, you go to menu, application settings, and then this, you would choose the format of video, which is right here. And then you can go down to change the interval from 10 seconds between photos to nine, six, five, four, or I'll turn it all the way up. A minute is the max you can go to, and then you can say how many shots you would like it to choose. Right now, it is at around 
330, and that's going to take three hours and 50 minutes at the current setting of 42 seconds between shots and 330 shots. The final product will be shown down here to be 11 seconds. If you just want to use the Canon ADD for the video mode time lapse, all you have to do is once you turn on the camera, go down to video and then once you're in video you hit menu make sure you're on the little icon right there for photo and go to number five time-lapse movie and then enable and then it'll have the detail set just like it did for the photo time-lapse the difference in video mode from photo mode is that it actually gives you the number of shots in the thousands so you can set to have the, the camera turn off after 500 shots a thousand shots 20 shots it doesn't matter and it'll actually tell you how long it's gonna to take to record that down here like the Sony camera does, and then it'll tell you how long at the end of the movie is going to be. So if I go 500 shots at three second intervals, it's gonna take almost 25 minutes to shoot, and 16 seconds will be the final product at the end. The big pro to this is again, a smaller file size. Um, the drawbacks are going to be that again, it's gonna output at 1080p. You don't have the ability to um, edit the time later on like you do with shooting video and speeding it up so you can't do real time to sped up It's just all sped up. Also, you're not going to be able to edit um, photo for photo So if you're trying to get a really dramatic effect, it's not going to be as um, High quality for cropping and stuff like that later on with most cameras You have the opportunity to, to actually set your interval unlike the iPhone or many other smartphones I can go in and I can actually set it to uh, one photo every five or ten seconds or even up to a minute if I want like a really long hour or two time lapse of a place. Uh, it's really good for like clouds and stuff like that if you want to see cloud movement through the sky. Um, also for sunsets, you can't really get that with an iPhone or a similar camera on your phones because again they have the limitations of only being about uh, half a second interval which I'm sure there might be some applications that can change that but I don't have any of those. And also to make sure you get a more polished look, even if you're doing it with an iPhone, I would always set the um, exposure and the focus so that it doesn't change throughout your shot. The third way and my favorite way to do it, even though it's a little bit more time consuming, is to take every photo individually, which there should be an intervalometer on your camera nowadays. There's a lot of cameras that do have it. I know some older generations, you have to get the little uh, cable release to do that but on my Canon 80D and my Sony RX100, in the application itself, you have the option to choose um, video time-lapse or photo time-lapse, where it'll take an interval of photos every few seconds or every minute. And that gives you a lot more versatility because it gives you the option to change your aperture, change your shutter speed if you want more of a blur, if it's a nighttime and you want the, the streaks of light or if you want people to be blurred out in your photos, um, you can do that with the manual settings on your camera and just set the interval to go off every few seconds, every few minutes. The biggest pro about doing it this way is that you can edit the photos individually or as a batch in Lightroom to get exactly the dramatic effect you're looking for. You can apply different filters, you can up the sharpening, change the vignetting, change the color scheme even. If you're shooting on a camera that has interchangeable lenses like my Canon 80D, you can play with the depth of field a little bit if you put on a 50 millimeter lens and then I import all the photos into Lightroom afterwards and make my changes in batch and then I export them as a time lapse. There are a few cons to shooting each photo individually. It means you have a thousand or more photos sometimes to edit in mass, which takes up a lot of space on the card, takes up a lot of space on your computer. And when you put it into Lightroom, exporting all of those photos with the edits uh, could take a little while. I think uh, my last one took probably an hour or even over an hour to edit about 1,200 photos into a time lapse. So this is how I'm going to set up my Canon 80D for my shoot. Turn the camera on, make sure it is in photo mode with the little switch up to the, the photo icon. Click menu and the first thing I want to do is I want to find the image quality and click on the image quality and make sure that raw is off and that I have medium JPEG selected so that the, the files are not too big. Once I have medium JPEG selected, I'm gonna go back to the menu, make sure I'm on the photo icon and go to menu number four, where it says interval timer. I'm gonna click on interval timer and enable. Once you click enable, it'll give you a little info and detail set icon down here. Once you click on that, that'll take you into how long between shots you wanna do, the intervals. You can do anything from hours to seconds, and then it'll have the number of shots at the bottom, and the number of shots it only goes up to 99 if you wanna do more than 100, 
go to double zero and it will be unlimited until you shut it off manually. Click OK. I just press the shutter button to go back to the main shutter and then I can set everything in my manual settings here and then I just press the shutter button to start. Now it will take a photo every three seconds until I tell it to stop. If you want to shoot photos or photo and video with the RX100, all you have to do is choose the formats right here by just scrolling over and clicking. As you can see, I've switched locations. Right now I'm in Perth. Um, it's been a few weeks. I've been out in the outback shooting a few time lapses and stuff as I went. So I'm gonna show you now what you can do with those uh, photos that you shot with the Sony or the Canon 80D. And here on my computer, I've got my files from Sydney, just as a sample. Um, I'm gonna throw them into Lightroom, which I've already done as well. And once you're in Lightroom and you've imported all of the photos, I'm just gonna go to the middle of the pack. I'm gonna find one here, and I'm going to edit it in the develop module up here. Change things like the white balance, the exposure highlights, whites and blacks, get it to where I think is good. And then I'm going to copy that setting. I'm going to select all of the rest of these. And then I'm gonna go down here to the sync button, hit sync, synchronize, and that's gonna give me uh, a full synchronization of all of the photos that I've selected for the time lapse. They're all gonna have all of the same adjustments as the one I did before. Now, if you're doing day to night and stuff like that, you may wanna change that. Uh, there's a few different ways to do that, but I won't get into it now. And since I've done that already as well, I'm gonna, after I've exported, I'm going to find the folder that I exported them to, make sure they're all there. All right, so I called that the Sydney time-lapse photos, and I've made an edited folder at the bottom here. All of these are edited from Lightroom already. It did take a while, that's why I did it beforehand. And then to make this into a time-lapse, I'm just going to open up Adobe Premiere. Once Adobe Premiere is open, I'm gonna double-click on the import media to start, and then I'm gonna find my time-lapse. So time-lapse photos here, edited, and then I'm gonna click on the first one and you want to make sure that image sequence down here is selected because if it's not, it's only gonna import that one frame and you need all of these photos for the time lapse. So you click image sequence and what that'll do is that'll bring it in as a 29.97 frames per second sequence. Drag that in and you've got your time lapse here. This is obviously going to be as large as the photos are so when I go to export, I will make it into a 4K size, which will cut the sides a little bit, put two black bars on the sides. But uh, I don't really have a problem with that because when I import that into other media, I can just zoom in and get a higher resolution time lapse for um, different panning and zooming that I can do in Premiere itself for different projects. The one thing I do like about the Sony RX100 versus the Canon 80D is that in the time-lapse application, you actually get a little bit more functionality. You can go down to ISO 80 instead of uh, ISO 100 on the Canon, and also uh, it gives you the opportunity to shoot photos and it will make a little video as well at the end if you want in 1080p. Where if you're looking to do the time-lapse later uh, and actually edit all of the photos but you still want something to show somebody right away as a uh, preview or something like that, you get a small video and you get all of the photos as well, which you can't really do that on the Canon 80D, but the quality does come out better by shooting with the Canon. And that's just a quick little demo of how I make most of my time-lapse videos with the Canon 80D and Sony RX100 Mark IV. Um, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'm gonna leave you with a few time lapses that I was able to shoot in the Outback and I'll leave the uh, setting details next to them if I can find all of them or remember them. Again, thank you for watching this video. I hope this inspires you to go out and travel and shoot uh, amazing photos and videos. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe below. I've got some great content from over 30 countries over the last year and a half and never stop adventuring.